Hey, this is Professor Grabowski. You know, the law invariably lags behind technology. And in this video, I'm going to briefly cover some of the emerging issues related to cyber law. Specifically, I'll look at artificial intelligence, cyborgs, drones, cryptocurrency, the gig economy, the tech war developing between China and the United States, and finally, the impact of the internet on the environment. First, let's begin with artificial intelligence. We're still probably a long way from having autonomous robots like the ones depicted in sci-fi movies like Terminator, but AI is no longer science fiction. We're already living in an era of machine learning in which computers are completing tasks traditionally done by humans, such as cleaning, preparing food, and driving cars. These machines require programming in order to operate, which raises ethical dilemmas. For example, self-driving cars may create a modern-day version of a classic ethics experiment known as the trolley problem. Imagine that you're in a self-driving car and its brakes fail. Directly in your car's path is a group of five jaywalkers. Should your car swerve onto the sidewalk into a tree that will injure or even kill you? Or should it run over the jaywalkers? In a future where cars drive themselves, the decision will be coded into the operating systems of millions of cars. How should the car be programmed? New legal issues will rise as AI advances further. For example, Amazon scrapped its use of an AI tool for hiring after it was found to be discriminating against female applicants. Technology entrepreneur Elon Musk has urged America's governors to regulate artificial intelligence before it's too late. Although his car company, Tesla, utilizes an AI-powered autopilot system, Musk insists that AI represents an existential threat to humanity. Some experts dismiss Musk's claims as alarmists and believe AI could greatly improve society. Regardless of which side you agree with, it's clear that the AI revolution is coming. Society needs to get ready. At the moment, the most action any government has taken is only to create a task force to look at the issue. Another issue lawmakers and ethicists will soon have to grapple with is cyborgs or cybernetics. The cyborgization of society is already well underway. Since 1960, millions of humans have had pacemakers implanted to aid the beating of their hearts. But historically, implants were done as a medical necessity to allow infirm individuals to live a normal life. Now some people are electing to enhance their perfectly healthy bodies with cybernetic implants for added convenience. For example, in Sweden, thousands of people have had a chip embedded under their skin enabling them to pay for items or to unlock doors simply by swiping their hand. As cyborg technology advances, devices could be implanted to provide enhanced motor and cognitive abilities. The law will soon have to wrestle with how to accommodate the integration of technology into the human being. For example, how should the law respond when the abilities of cyborgs surpass those of the general population? And what legal rights should be afforded to people as they become more machine and less biology? Well, not all issues raised by tech lack regulations. In some cases, such as drones, there may be too many rules, and as a result, innovation is stifled. Like the internet, drones, or unmanned aerial vehicles, originated for military use, but they're now commonly used by the general public for business and pleasure alike. More than one and a half million drones are registered in the United States. Now, realizing the potential nuisances that this could create, the federal government began regulating drone operators in 2012. As drone technology improves, businesses are looking to utilize them in new and exciting ways. For example, deliveries of small packages by a drone can be done much more cost effectively than deliveries by truck. But at the moment, such innovations are hindered by the FAA's rule mandating that drone operators keep their unmanned aircraft within eye view at all times. But eliminating the rule could create new dangers. In order to carry multiple packages for delivery services, drones will need to be much larger, perhaps weighing 5,000 pounds or more.
At that size, a drone crashing to the ground could destroy a building and kill anyone in its way. The FAA has a reputation for being conservative and playing it safe on this issue, but they are exploring possibilities. The FAA selected 10 private sector projects to explore what regulations make sense for drones. It's waived current restrictions so that companies can provide it with data that will help it craft new rules. Apple, AT&T, and Google are among companies testing everything from mosquito control in Florida to food delivery in California. Eventually, Uber envisions using drones as air taxis to transport people from place to place. Speaking of Uber, let's now discuss the sharing economy. The sharing economy includes apps such as Uber and Airbnb, which enable people to utilize an item or service without owning it. Such apps are increasing in popularity, but they also raise a number of legal issues. A common criticism is that the sharing economy business model has an unfair advantage over other highly regulated businesses. For example, Uber and Lyft have been accused of abusing workers' rights by classifying their full-time drivers as contractors instead of employees. By doing so, they can keep pay below state minimum wage levels and avoid having to pay payroll taxes, unemployment insurance, and workers' compensation. Meanwhile, Airbnb has also avoided many hotel occupancy taxes. Since it's still unclear whether or not Airbnb is a hotel for tax purposes, it's difficult for cities to collect taxes from people who rent out their places through Airbnb. As a result, many lawsuits have been filed against sharing services, and cities and states are starting to pass laws to address these problems. For example, San Francisco now has an ordinance that requires Airbnb hosts located in the city to register with the city and pay its hotel tax. Another area that's just now starting to get regulated is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a somewhat new and controversial system of digital money that's challenging the legacy financial system. This phenomenon began in 2009 when a mysterious figure known by the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin and with it blockchain technology, which underpins the notion of cryptocurrency. In the decades since then, it's rapidly grown in popularity and has become a valuable asset that can be used to purchase products and services, send payments to others, or exchange for traditional money. But it also has many risks, including market volatility, scams, and hacks. Furthermore, cryptocurrency is often exploited by criminals for money laundering, terrorism financing, and cybercrime. Hence, it creates a unique regulatory problem for governments. How can they allow access to financial services through cryptocurrencies while also preventing them from being utilized for illegal activities? Cryptocurrency is so new that it does not fit into existing laws. So governments around the world are just beginning to grapple with how to regulate it. The United States government has mostly taken a hands-off approach so far. Lawmakers have enacted some policies, such as tax laws, but many issues surrounding digital money remain unclear or unregulated. But times are changing. Facebook's announcement that it plans to launch its own cryptocurrency has caused alarm among lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Both Democrats and Republicans alike seem to agree that more regulation is necessary in the near future. Another issue American lawmakers are concerned about is China. There's a tech war brewing between the U.S. and China, and coronavirus is probably only going to exacerbate it. Tensions have been escalating since long before the pandemic, though. For example, as Bloomberg reports, technology is increasingly the most contentious aspect of China's relationship with America. The South China Morning Post agrees, saying that the U.S.-China tech war is the defining issue of the century. The United States and China have long been interdependent when it comes to tech, but they've had protracted disputes on issues like trade, cyber stability, and human rights. So now they're in the process of actively decoupling. If you follow the news, you know that both sides have made moves to anger the other side. And as this conflict escalates, both sides stand to suffer. Chinese companies are heavily dependent on American suppliers for many critical components, including semiconductors. Meanwhile, China accounts for more than 90% of global production of rare earth materials that are used in smartphones, batteries, guided missiles, and other tech products. 
As I mentioned, the coronavirus pandemic has heightened hostility between the two sides, so reconciliation seems unlikely. Finally, let's discuss another international issue. That is, climate change. There's a lot of talk these days about climate change, and when it comes to the environment, our increasingly online lives are both helping the environment, but also harming the environment. On one hand, the internet can significantly cut down on carbon emissions by allowing workers to telecommute from home. Think about it. Work commutes, paper waste, and office buildings are among the largest sources of pollution. Companies such as Dell have been able to significantly reduce their carbon footprint by allowing many of their employees to work from home. Unfortunately, most of the stuff we do on the internet is not productive. In fact, it's often a waste of time and a waste of the environment's resources. In the past, we would be reading books, playing catch, or socializing with friends. Instead, many of us now use our free time online. We use social media, we play video games, or we watch Netflix. The average American spends five and a half hours a day on their smartphones alone, and that includes a few hours on social media. So our irresponsible internet use is outweighing the benefits of things like telecommuting. Keep in mind, the internet involves more than just our devices and the energy required to power them. It also requires the storing and transmission of data to and from data centers, which require a lot of non-renewable energy. By 2030, the internet is projected to be responsible for 20% or more of the world's carbon emissions, making its environmental impact worse than any country on Earth except for the United States, China, and India. In other words, as the internet progresses, our environment will suffer more. So how can you keep up with the issues we just covered and learn about new ones? I'm going to share with you a handful of free and useful resources. The mainstream media regularly reports on cyber law issues. Do a search for terms such as internet law or digital ethics on Google News or at the New York Times website. Several tech blogs regularly report on the latest legal developments and controversies. Check out blogs such as TechCrunch. If you're into podcasts, the Cyber Law Podcast is a weekly podcast on the latest events in technology, security, privacy, and government. It's hosted by a cyber attorney who's joined by expert guests. There are helpful advocacy groups and think tanks keeping an eye on the latest developments too. One of them is the Center for Democracy and Technology. Their website has updates on trending issues. Another great organization is the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which also has a blog on online speech regulation. Several prominent universities engage in cyber law research and share their findings with the public. For example, Harvard's Berkman Center for Internet and Society has a free e-newsletter on the latest issues in cyberspace. Lastly, the National Conference of State Legislatures tracks proposed state laws related to the internet and technology on its website. Be forewarned that many of these researchers, journalists, and organizations have their own political agendas and biases. But, although you may not agree with their stance on issues, if you read their content, it will help keep you abreast on the emerging issues in cyber law and ethics. Well, there you have it. Those are some of the main issues coming down the pike, along with some resources to stay informed. Once again, this has been Professor Mark Rabowski. Thanks for watching.